Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we're going to be checking out Don's 6x6 Beetle. And yes, this was at one point a beetle, but now it is pretty much a beetle in essentially half of its body only because the frame underneath is very different the axles are obviously not from anything volkswagen related and the engine is a turbocharged ls engine now how could you go about getting your hands on this thing well i will leave a link in the description down below to where you can actually check out the discord server where you can find more information about it and it's also worth noting that this is a premium mod therefore it is pc only but without any further ado let's go ahead and take it into the garage we'll build it up and then we'll take it out on an adventure out here on tnb trails and see how this thing actually drives because i'm sure it's going to be like be quite the experience so let's go in and go for the performance engine right out of the gate and i'm going to do the highway transmission because you're still going to have the low ranges that you can adjust between it's just your high ranges are going to be even higher now suspension wise i think i'm i think i'm going to throw the lift kit underneath it because why not and as far as the, like, tire options go, you got some 36s. You've actually got some really nice-looking 36-inch um, Patagonia duels. You can go up to a, let's see, it actually, it gives you a lot of 36s. God, I love the Boggers, the Rockzillas, the Pitbulls. Is it all 36s, or does it go up? Oh, my God, it keeps going, dude. It keeps freaking going. This, like, this tire selection is insane. Oh, dude, those Maxxis Razors look sick, though. Let's see. Oh, these are an even wider offset wheel. Oh, that's sick. Okay, so if we keep going, the wheel selection is going to change a little bit, but I think they may all be 36s. And to be honest, them being all 36s makes sense solely because of the fact that if they were any bigger than that, the rear axles would be too close together and then, you know, they would clip if you went for anything bigger. Now, let's see. What do I want to run on this thing? I mean, there's so many freaking options. Now, I'm thinking... I actually kind of want to run the Razors, but then again, if I run the Patagonia Duels, I can literally run this thing as a dually in the rear, and I kind of really want to do that. Can we go with the 36-inch Patagonia on the wider wheels? I kind of want to... Oh, dude. Yes. That's what we're going to be... Yeah, that's, that's what we're going to be doing. That's going to be sick. All right, so let's see. Body-wise... Wait a minute, you can actually, oh, you can take it off. And then at that point, it just becomes a 6x6, six six, essentially a tube buggy. So let's go ahead and throw the body back on. And oh my god, the wheel selection is ridiculous, bro. You have essentially whatever wheel choice you want to go with. And I really like these fuel Zephyrs. Those look awesome. Now, body-wise, it actually... So when you go through the body color, it also changes the color on not only the body itself, but the springs that are wrapped around the coilovers, the, uh, let's see, the steering assist pump, the diff covers... It actually changes the color of the brake calipers as well, the valve covers, the throttle body, and actually the block too. Not the heads, but the lower section of the block itself. That's super cool actually. That is sick. Now, if I go up to the top again, if you run the body in black, then obviously everything else will be red. Now, if you go for like a green, I really like the green actually. I think the green kind of brings out this weird like almost a little bit of like an evil vibe that this thing has going on, which I really think is cool. I like the deep red. The dark red looks really, really cool. We'll throw, uh, we'll throw beans up there on the dash. And now, let's take this thing out and drive it for the first time. I really want to see how it flexes out, too. And I wonder how... Okay, so even if you have the lift kit on it, you also have the option of going to an even higher suspension setting even while you have the lift kit on it. So let's actually drive this thing up on the flex ramp. We're going to do this on the front axle and the rearward most axle. So let's see. Okay, yeah, the flex is pretty freaking good. Let's see how it flexes on the rear. I'm really curious because at the end of the day... That rear flex is going to determine a lot of how this thing's potential is going to be out on the trails. So let's see. Let's work this thing up. Oh, dude. That's sick. That's freaking awesome. I love the way that looks. Look at that. Bro, and seeing... It's like you see something flexed out like that and you expect it to be a 4x4 and then you're like, oh... There's an extra axle back there. There's like, and that is not something you would ever expect. Oh God, I did not realize I left it in reverse. All right, so let's get this thing out on some trails and see what it's all about. 
Now, it's actually really composed to drive. Even with the highest powered uh, engine tune, I mean, when you're running max boost in that turbo LS engine, you're still gonna be like easily controllable. The way it actually soaks up the bumps over even like the main dirt road is really impressive. The damping on this thing is super well tuned, super well set up. All right, so let's make our way up this trail. I'm just gonna like straight up send it. It's literally so incredibly comfortable doing what it's doing. It never feels out of its element. Now, I'm sure if you were in some really, really tight trails, it might be a little iffy because it's so long. But really, in that sense, I mean, not only do you have the advantage of a long wheelbase on your side, you also have the advantage of, or I should say the combined advantage of not only the long wheelbase, but the fact that you have that middle axle means that you have less of a chance of getting high centered on stuff. God, I love that view. That view never gets old. Now, I will say I'm going to slow down the pace once we get into some more technical obstacles, of course. But on the main like trail like this, dude, she rips. Even in high range, I mean, it kind of scrabbles for grip a little bit. Scrabbles? Scrambles. I don't know why I said scrabbles, but scrambles for grip a bit. And once it grabs grip, dude, it's gone. It is absolutely freaking gone. Now, there's an alternate lineup here that you don't have to take, but you can if you want to. And I'm definitely going to take that real quick. I'm going to take it just because I want to see how this thing does in a tighter crawling environment. But I think it'll do just fine. And as a matter of fact, I think that the middle axle and the long wheelbase is actually going to help it. All right, so I'm going to throw it into, I'm thinking low plus. All right, we're going to want to go for the higher suspension mode. Oh yeah, dude, it doesn't even, it doesn't even care. It did not even care about making its way over that gap. Now, bringing, oh, bringing it back down is going to be a little tricky. It scraped the frame a little bit there. I think that on the way back down, our biggest issue is going to be essentially whether or not it actually has the angle for this. But here's the thing. You have like no front end. Your front end is your axle. So your axle is going to hit the obstacle or hit the ground before literally anything else. Oh, there you go. Let's try low minus. Dude, because of the fact that there's nothing for that front axle to hit, and there's nothing for, or I shouldn't say there's nothing in front of the front axle for it to hit, and nothing behind the rear axle for it to hit, approach and departure angles are just never a concern for you. Legitimately never. And you can either drive it in full send mode, or you can drive it super calmly like this, and it really adapts well to essentially both scenarios. Let's see how it does through this rock field real quick, nice and easy. Oh, we could go up the wash. I don't know how it would do going up the wash though. The wash is nasty. I mean, the wash is legitimately nasty and I have no idea how it's gonna go once we make, my, once we make our way up the wash, but let's see. Easy. This is automatic mode, by the way. Well, it started to shift around on me a little bit. I think I'm caught on the frame. I really need to find a little bit of extra grip. Let me see if I can pull myself around the front of that rock with the winch real quick. You see, as long as you're not stuck on the frame, you're going to be fine. But being stuck on the frame is going to end up being the only issue you'll have on a section like this. And I mean, once you find grip, you're fine. I mean, literally, once you find grip, you're gone. But uh, I think we sunk it, dude. Yeah, I think we sunk it, and I think we sunk it real good. Might need a little bit of winch assistance with that. And that's not anything against the vehicle at all. That's just to say that we, you know, we essentially found an area on the map that ended up being so difficult that it just sank. Now, granted, we're on, what, a 36-inch tire, I think? So it's one of those things where I'm like, I've got a tree stuck in my engine. Let's, you know what? I think the wash is probably not going to be the best area for it. Now, I will say that on any other trail system, you probably would have been fine. I just feel like the wash, eh, I don't know if I would attempt to take this thing up there. Now, I do want to take this thing out to the racetrack as well, because I, I just feel like it would be really fun on the racetrack. I wrinkled the body a little bit. Oof. Mega oofs for me. Let's take this thing to the racetrack, because I feel like with the performance that I'm seeing right now on this dirt back road, like, it's literally so well composed, and it's got such a low center of gravity, that I feel like, even though it is a 6x6, it should do really, really well out on the track. And the damping, once again, I cannot get over how good that suspension tuning is. 
Let me actually lower that suspension down a little bit and get the damping into an even better place. Oh, come on. Not even the damping, but the center of gravity. Let's go with a little bit of interior view. Oh, you got beans right up there. I love that. Although I gotta say, I love how there's a windshield, but there's also a clean pass-through between like the engine and the driver cabin. And the only thing that would worry me about that is like, if I was going through some mud, I would get splattered and my windshield would get covered. And so like, I don't know, I might try to like, if I was driving this like in real life, I might try to figure out a way to close off that pass-through, but that ah, snow runner, don't worry about it. Whoa. All right, let's see how she does for a lap around the track, y'all. It is such a sick looking rig. Like, that is one of the things that I can't get over about it is like, visually, you will never find anything that looks exactly like this. I'm saving that photo, by the way. That looks incredible. That looks absolutely incredible. All right, three, get rid of that. Two, one, drop it and go. Oh, what? Come on. Thank you. Automatic mode wanted to go into reverse because it just decided that it did not want to big brain today. Come on. Yo, this thing in high on the racetrack, if you just like modulate the throttle where you want it to be, it rips. I, did he like tune it for this or something? Wow. I'll throw into automatic, see if it'll hold sixth or seventh going up this hill. Oh God. Okay, yeah, no, maybe not. The auto gearbox just kind of like, it's not even that the thing doesn't have enough power, it's just the gearbox programming um, of, of the way SnowRunner's gearbox programming works isn't a big fan of it. Oh! Oh! Uh, recovery. I'm okay with that. Landed literally directly on my front axle, but we recovered it and got away with no damage. So, I mean, if I can do that, hey, this thing's golden. It's absolutely golden. And if you ever need more speed, just throw it back into automatic mode, tap the clutch, and you're fine. And then throw it into high whenever you go back up the, up the hills, and you'll maintain that average speed that you want. Ooh, we're good. That is insanity. I cannot believe that we actually got through that completely unscathed. Top-notch tuning, dude. Absolute top-notch tuning. Can I stay in seventh? I can. If I legitimately, like, do not lift, I can stay in seventh. Just stay flat. Wow! Those progressive drifts, though? I cannot believe it's so good. That oh, yep, and then the transmission decided it didn't want a transmission anymore. Back down the hill and across the line, and I hit it wrong, and I'm going to end up flopping it. But you know what? We didn't end up flopping it until the very end right there across the line, so I'm not really going to worry about it. She's all good. She's completely 100% good to go. Flip it back onto its wheels. We got some mud on the, well, on the roof, but that's ah, no big deal. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, please do let me know your thoughts on the video and the vehicle down in the comment section below. And if you would like to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button to turn those notifications on, and I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.